So Kyle Orton, who has nine wins this season, the second most by a rookie quarterback since 1970, and of course the most is Ben Roethlisberger, who had 13 last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers, his opposite number. Here is Kyle Orton, who has the lowest quarterback rating in the National Football League. And as Darrell mentioned, a lot of talk in Chicago, and even Lovey Smith said not happy with the passing performance, particularly last week. First down and going to the air on first down, and the pass caught by Moussin Muhammad, who is dropped at the 25-yard line after a gain of six by Ike Taylor. And uh, <laughs> a little tongue-in-cheek here with the Bears' offense, partner. Well, I'm buying into it now. You know, th this is the formula. It's their defense that's been winning games, and Robbie Gould is their field goal kicker. So they've got a great ground game. You saw the balls they've been having at the quarterback spot. They want more production, so let's lean on these guys. And they have, and it's worked. Nine and three coming in. Two tight ends. Second down and four. Again to the air, and the pass caught by the fullback Brian Johnson, and Johnson will get the first down, does not get out of bounds. A seven-yard pickup with the free safety Chris Hope on the tackle. And this is going to be uh, the area that I think needs to play very well this afternoon, the secondary for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Chicago is not an aggressive down-the-field passing game. You know, that's, that's the story that everybody knows about. But in this losing streak by the Pittsburgh Steelers, there have been big plays in the passing game. They've got to eliminate those today. They've got a great opportunity because of the way that Chicago plays offense. And confidence factor is right now not very high for the Steelers, and they're looking to get that back. First down and 10 on the 33, and their first running call goes to Thomas Jones, who went over the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career, picks up two yards on that play. When we talk about Chicago's offense, I, I think the one thing you forget, and, and it really plays into what this whole team is built around, is the fact that their offense gets on the field, and yeah, they're not generating a lot of points, but they stay on the field. They're taking some time off the clock. They allow their defense to get off the field and get recovered. They don't have a lot of three and outs, so they do give that uh, vaunted defense a chance to catch their breath. Second down and eight from the 35, and here is Jones again, and he doesn't get much. Maybe a couple of yards with Aaron Smith, the defensive end, on the tackle. That'll bring up third and long for the Bears and the Steelers, allowing 35 points. 34. Ben Roethlisberger with two receivers lining up to the left. Now Hines Ward moves. And the handoff to Willie Parker, and he is knocked back for a loss of two yards by Ogunlia and Scott. Loss of two yards. Ben Roethlisberger has his best rating in the first quarter. And of course, you know he's playing with that injured thumb. He has a splint and a glove protecting it. He has missed a couple of four games this year because of other injuries. He played well against Cincinnati last week, though, with that thumb. The question to me is, how does it hold up during the course of the game? If this defense starts knocking him around, does that thumb all of a sudden become a problem in the second half? Charlie Batch becomes the backup quarterback. On second down, the screen pass to Willie Parker. Parker gets loose into Bears territory and Willie Parker almost gets by everybody and he is tackled after a huge gain of 45 yards by the strong safety Todd Johnson you've got great upfield rushers for the Chicago Bears one way to counteract that the screen pass Willie Parker slips out to the outside here comes Jeff Harding, 64, gets the key block on Brian Erlacher, takes two guys out. Now it's a straight shot down the field. There's Jeff Harding, two guys, Lance Briggs and Brian Erlacher, and then Willie Parker turns on the Jets. And the Steelers threaten early. First down on the Bears' 22-yard line. And they give the ball to Parker, gets running room, spins away from a defender and gets about eight or nine yards on first down and gets a rise out of the crowd. Dan Kreider, the fullback, with a big block and close to first down for Willie Parker. Ben Roethlisberger going down. He knows who to make sure he gets a, a little pat on the back to those big guys up front. And it's difficult to run a screen pass. When you go up against a team like Chicago, I think everybody assumes it should be automatic to have it in there. You've got to have the right offensive linemen and great chemistry between them and your running backs. Well, the Bears allowed the fewest the big plays, 20 or more, before that one. 45 yards and a second and one on the 13 of Chicago. Again to the ground, again to Parker. Not this time. And he is tackled by Alex Brown for a loss of one.
Well, that screen pass was successful because of the upfield pressure of this Bears defensive front. And here's a matchup that's going to be very important for Pittsburgh today. Two young guys at the tackle position going against Alex Brown and Adewale Agulia. Probably the two best tandem pass rushers on any team in the NFL. The way that they play, the way they protect Ben Roethlisberger will go a long way to their success offensively. Third down and two on the 14. So an early key stop. Jerome Bettis checking in for the Steelers. Expected to see a lot of action, and here is the pass to Hines Ward, and Ward gets to the five, still on his feet, scores, touchdown Pittsburgh. Bears with their second possession, they got one first down before being forced to kick. We'll start from the 26. Orton, and the pass caught by Justin Gage, and Gage... Fighting his way for the first down. He's got a lot of size. Ike Taylor brings him down, a gain of 11. Keep in mind that Roberto Garza is starting at right guard for Chicago. Terrence Metcalf came down with a bruised shoulder. So that's an injury on the offense for the Bears. And as you mentioned, with Mike Brown out of action, as well as Chris Harris, first two starters for injuries out for the Bears this year defensively. We're going to see that because we just uh, we showed you Todd Johnson who played Mike Brown's position but both of those safeties out of the lineup today's game and the pitch goes to Thomas Jones Jones did his best run by far and he gets into Steeler territory and is pushed out of bounds at the 44 by Larry Foote so 20 more yards for the Bears good patience by Thomas Jones. If you're if you're running back in the NFL, you got to let your guys get out there and get their blocks. Everybody pulls around. You see right there, he's going to let this thing develop and clean up a little bit. Right there, you're not real sure where to go. Look at that. He goes back inside. A young running back who's pressing that hole is going to think, I need to get outside in that lane. Thomas Jones, a little hesitation, gets a better alley inside that block. And Brian Johnson downfield with another big block. First down on the Steeler 43. Here is Jones. And not much there. Tony, what's the field like as we start this game in the cold? You know, the surface down here as the game goes on is going to get more and more chewed up. They put some green kind of uh, absorbent thing to put on the field to try and absorb some of the water. But it's going to get worse and worse as the day goes on. And the offensive and defensive linemen are going to have a little bit of problems getting some footing down here, guys. All right, one-yard gain that time by Jones. It'll be second down and nine on the Steeler 42. Protection for Orton, and Orton overthrows Gage out of bounds. And that will bring up third down and nine. This is the first meeting of these traditional NFL foes in seven years. The, th the funny thing is they're kind of mirror images of each other about a year apart. Last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, they go all the way to the AFC Championship game, basically playing a very similar style to what the Chicago Bears are playing this year. So when everybody is critical of Lovey Smith and, well, how are you going to do this? One of the teams that he looks at is Pittsburgh. Hey, they went 15-1 and one last year. Bill Cower at the helm. Now they're struggling and fighting for a playoff berth, probably wild card. Third down and nine. Bernard Berrien in the game, the speedster and wide receiver. And Kyle Orton, seeing his receivers cover, covered, runs for it and uh, comes up short, it appears. Gets inside the 35. And it was uh, Joey Porter and Clint Krewalt making the stop. And I think the Bears are about a yard short and fourth down coming up. That those was an eight-yard pickup. Those are the decisions that they want to see Kyle Orton start to make. As opposed to hanging in the pocket and trying to get the ball to somebody down the field when the play breaks down, make that quick decision, tuck the ball, and get what you can. Put yourself in a position to convert fourth down. And I think this is a good idea for Lovey Smith. Fourth down and about a yard. Problematic on the field goal with this win. So they're going for it with multiple tight ends. Fourth down and one. And if they get the first down, Thomas Jones down to the 31-yard line. A three-yard pickup, and the Bears move the sticks. Well, with a team that has the approach of, of field position, that's a gutsy call by Lovey Smith. That's probably as aggressive as you'll see him in that situation because normally he's going to punt the ball, pin Pittsburgh back. But, you know, when you've got a great defense, I think you can be a little bit more aggressive in what you're doing offensively with your play call. And it may be tough to punt from inside the 40. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not easy. I mean, if you make a mistake, you net 15 yards. Bears on the 31 of the Steelers, first down. And Orton 
looking one way and then fires it out and getting away. Thomas Jones down the field. Jones going vertically down to about the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 16. A 15-yard pickup. Larry Foote, one of the inside linebackers, making the tackle. And Jones almost was tackled behind the line of scrimmage. When this ball was thrown, I'm thinking it's going the other way. I'm thinking that Joey Porter is going to pick this ball off and run it back. Kyle Orton's going to come out. He's looking to his right. Something doesn't look good there. So he turns and very quickly throws this ball out to Thomas Jones. Joey Porter, I thought, had a jump on it enough where he was going to intercept it or at least put a big hit on Thomas Jones. Well, he juked Joey on that one, and it's a first down on the 16-yard line. And the handoff to Jones, and he gets to the 14, a pickup of two. To Shea Townsend at the cornerback spot making the tackle. So nearly five minutes remain in the first quarter. Steelers score in their first possession. The Bears threaten on their second. What a great response by this Bears offense. Everybody's been very critical of them. Everybody wanted to know what was going to happen to Chicago if they fell behind. They come out, fall behind on the opening possession. And the response of this group has been very impressive on this drive. Second down and eight. And here is Orton. Plenty of time. Can't find a receiver and smartly throws it beyond Musi Muhammad, who is covered extremely well by Troy Palamalu. And so that will bring up third down on the play. Smart play by the rookie from Purdue. He's making good decisions right now. That one there, throw the ball away. He's thrown a couple away already in the first couple series with this offense. I like the decision when he tucked the ball and just uh, got what he could, put them in a position to convert a fourth down. So he's making better decisions. And Lovey needs more production, and, and Kyle knows that. He knows he didn't play well last week. The offensive line also for the Chicago Bears doing a great job of picking up a lot of stunts. The Steelers are throwing at him up on the line of scrimmage, running crosses with the tight ends and the tackles. They don't play the 34 much, Tony, that's for sure. Third down, and the pass is caught inside the five by Muhammad, and it'll be first and goal for Chicago. So Musin Muhammad, who was shut out last week for the first time in three years with a big 12-yard game. Here comes all your pressure. They're going to slide their protection that way. Kyle Orton is turning his back. He's got faith in his offensive line to pick that blitz up. They're bringing an overload to that side. He focuses in on Musin Muhammad and delivers the ball into a tight window also to Lovey Smith. He's not losing that job again. First down for Chicago on the 19-yard line, and here's Thomas Jones. Jones tackled from behind by Joey Porter after a pickup of three. One of the guys that, uh, that kind of gets overlooked in this Steelers defense, in my mind, is Casey Hampton. You know, we all talk about their linebackers, and they've always had great linebackers, especially on the outside. But when you're in that 3-4, that other guy you got to have is a guy in the nose, and Casey Hampton, number 98, he just he just knocked Olin Cruz about three yards back into the backfield and forced Thomas Jones to make a quick decision. Not many people can do that to Cruz. Second down and seven on the 22. And Musin Muhammad hit as he catches the ball and will not have the first down about a yard and a half shy. And James Farrier, who missed two games with a sprained knee for the Steeler defense, making the stop at six-yard pickup. So once again, the Bears... Facing a third down. You know, Chicago accepting a field goal the last time they had the ball. Their longest scoring drive in their last three games for a touchdown has been only eight yards. They would have smashed that one, but they did not get the TD. <laughs> well, you go ten yards and you smash that one. <laughs> right. Third down and one. And here's Jones. Close. And they may need a measurement. We'll see where they made the hit Larry foot so after break so everybody would always look at him from both teams to see if he had his arms crossed because you knew you only had to walk out to the hole you didn't have to run very important man on the field there guys famed orange sleeves as Willie Parker runs for the first down he's had a great first half Hillenmeyer on the tackle after Parker picks up 11 yards and people I guess at home always want to know you know how does it work when do you go to commercial who communicates that well it's the orange sleeves guy and I didn't know until Tony told us that the players long for the orange sleeves to signal for the first timeout. When he, when he had them hands crossed, man, it was a, uh, it was a pleasure. A little smile on all the guy, heavy guys' faces. First down at the 38-yard line. Two tight ends for the Steelers, who lead by four. Parker again. 
And Parker getting to the 40 yard line, picking up two more. Ian Scott. I think one of the things we're seeing right now that's very uncharacteristic of this Chicago defense, and it's actually carried into their special teams also, are missed tackles. Uh, I had a chance to see them a couple times this year, and this is the poorest I've seen them start a game with their tackling. A lot of these uh, these longer plays by the Steelers are because somewhere along the way, early in that play, Chicago has missed a tackle. Second down and eight on the 40 of Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger stepping up and flipping out and the pass bobbled and then held on to by Dan Kreider the fullback and that could have been disaster for the Steelers with several Bears in the neighborhood picks up five yards to the 45 yard line with third down coming up. He didn't have much time to finish that play but we talked about these guys early on and, and right now Max Starks and Trey Essex both doing a good job there's Max Starks going up against Ottawali Agulia rides him to the outside you know Ben has to step up a little bit but hey th those two guys have done a great job up to this point because we have not called Alex Brown or Ottawali Agulia's name yet with pressures and sacks. Quincy Morgan in motion to the right it'll be third down and three at the 45 Roethlisberger and the pass is caught and they don't get the first down but Ron Hayes is hit immediately and a flag goes down and uh, the initial indication appears from and the Steelers back to their 35 yard line. Roethlisberger getting pressure and on the screen pass for Ron Hayes spinning away and Hayes is going to get the first down as he gets into Chicago territory. 16 yard gain before Azuma brings him down. Hayes the third down back today delivers for the Steelers. More missed tackles by the Chicago Bears defense. Brian Erlacher, 54. There he goes into the middle by the emblem. Now he's going to have a chance to get Veron Haynes right there. He gets blocked. He had another one missed earlier. They had him at the original line of scrimmage. That was probably another 10, 9, 10 yards by Veron Haynes just on his effort and Chicago missing tackles. 15 missed tackles today. So if you want to be compared to the 85 defense, you better shore up that tackling first. First down at the 49. Big play by Haynes. And a handoff to Willie Parker. And you heard before the game Ben Roethlisberger telling Tony Siragusa on the field, you know, we're going to be running the ball today. And they are successfully nine yards that time for Parker with the tackle by Todd Johnson. You know, down here on the field, Moose, you did a great, I think it was awesome you pointed that out that they're missing tackles. What they're not doing is they're not running through the ball carrier. They're stopping their feet and they're diving. You'll see a lot of guys laying out trying to get, a, you know, an arm tackle on these guys. The Steelers' run game is not a team you can arm tackle. You need to run through the player and solidify that, that uh, tackle. And you would know, having played them, second down and two, first back through. The Dan fullback. Kreider, the fullback, and Kreider inside the 30. That one is for Moose, the fullback back carries Ryan Erlacher the tackle after 12 more yards for the Steelers uh, you fall asleep on a guy like that you're you're worried about this guy you know, Willie Parker Veron Haynes and all of a sudden you slip 35 in there real quick he even gets a trap that's awesome now all he has to do is catch a ball and you'll really be happy almost I uh, already had a catch I mean he bobbled it a little bit out there in the flat but he pulled it in so we got a catch and a carry so the Steelers moving the ball on the ground especially using up the clock leading seven to three first down on the Bears 29 play action and the pass flag down is caught by Cedric Wilson and Wilson is down at the 12 yard line first down and 10 on the 12 and here is Parker trying to go outside left Parker going in and no signal given, and Parker is out of bounds just inside the one-yard line. And Brandon McGowan, rookie safety, prevented the touchdown. But once again, the Steelers looking a very good threatening. Dan Kreider doing it all. This time it's on a block. Watch, he gets to the outside, seals Hunter Hillenmeyer to the inside. That allows Willie Parker to get the corner. Brandon McGowan does a nice job coming all the way across to deny the touchdown. But boy, the Steelers got onto the edge very quickly, and there was no more support from the secondary. Parker with 43 yards on nine carries. Jerome Bettis comes into the game. First and goal at the one. And they give it to the bus. Touchdown, Steelers. 
This is a totally different team than the club that lost the previous three. A one-yard run by Jerome Bettis. On that island, and they have played well this afternoon. Now the left tackle, rookie Trey Essex, only his third starting left tackle. Back, back starts, who's 6'8", the right side. That was supposed to be vulnerable time for Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, the pass caught eight yards to Heinz Ward. You guys got to give a little bit of credit to uh, Ben Roethlisberger, too. He moves around the pocket. I don't think people can realize how big this man is. He is He's like a defense or an offensive lineman there, a quarterback, and he moves around the pocket like Fred Astaire, man. He dances around that thing and just glides. Don't get, don't get carried away, Tony. Yeah, but it's that feel that you have as a quarterback. You don't have to be a great scrambler. I think the guy that everybody remembers is Dan Marino. I mean, he wasn't going to break 10, 15-yard runs, but he was so good in the pocket of having that feel of where to move to have just enough time to get that ball out. Fred Astaire, high company. Ron Haynes is in the game as the third down back, and Antoine Randall L. fumble after the catch, and is recovered by the Steelers. Everything is going against the Chicago Bears. The things that have gone their way all season are going the other way today. There's been two balls on the ground, and Pittsburgh has recovered both of those fumbles. They're missing tackles. I mean, just things that you haven't seen them do or plays that they've been able to make this season in the past are not going their way today. And alert play by Cedric Wilson, who recovered the fumble. So a 14-yard play. First down at the 43, Alex Brown shaken up has come out of the game. And on first down, Willie Parker trying to go outside and is sandwiched after a gain of one. Brian Erlacher, the principal defender, one yard on the play. This Alex Brown will take a look. We talked about the back being in there to help Chip. Gives him a little shot. You don't know if he got him in the ribs. Maybe they went knee to knee. He's holding it. He looks like his shoulder right there. Israel Adonaje came in on that last play. So Alex Brown, who has been phenomenal up front for the Bears, who have managed to do it with a four-man rush. Today's a different story, however. They've not gotten close to Roethlisberger. Hand off to Willie Parker. Goes up the middle and tackled at the 48-yard line. A gain of five by Adana Jay with help from Lance Briggs. They just seem completely out of sync defensively. They're on different levels on that play. They're bringing the blitz, but they're, they're not getting upfield. When Chicago is, is in a good rhythm and they're playing well defensively, as they move to play this, this style of defense where every guy takes a gap, it's very well coordinated. Right now, it doesn't seem to be as coordinated as it has been in the past. And Ian Scott lipping off the field. Looks like the Bears of the team getting beaten up, including their defensive unit. Tank Johnson has replaced him. Third down and five for the Bears, for the Steelers on their 48. Roethlisberger's pass and trying to extend Quincy Morgan to no avail. So fourth down Bears, 64 to 39. And in total yards, 194 to 88. From the 16, Mohammed gets a few extra yards and gets the first down. Great. Moves by Musi Muhammad, 15 yards for the first. And somebody on this offense has got to step up and make a play like this. It's a simple hitch on the outside, but it's the effort by Musi Muhammad after the play that should get this group fired up a little bit. They're kind of waddling around out there. They've always relied on their defense to come out and make that type of play. Well, guess what? I don't think it's going to happen today. So somebody in the offensive group is going to have to step up and make a big play. You're absolutely right, Moose. One thing I did notice on that last play on Moose Muhammad, nobody was down there making blocks downfield for him to get a, you know, a bigger uh, chunk of uh, yardage out of him. Going underneath to Thomas Jones, who was hit at the 36-yard line by Larry Foote, after a pickup of four yards, there you see the Bears' first four possessions. They had a first down on their first possession, then had to kick. They got the field goal after they had a first and goal. Remember, they went for it on fourth down and one on the Steeler 34. They made the first down, but the last two possessions, they have come up empty. Second down and six. Bernard Berrien at the top of their picture. Haven't gone to bury it yet. Orton looking his way and the pass, and it's knocked down. Nearly intercepted. Deshae Townsend defending against Berrien. And that will bring up third down. He's going to come down and he's going to run an in route. Now, Deshae Townsend is sitting on this. Watch the break that he gets. 26 right there. He gets in front of Bernard Berrien to make the play on the ball. 
great job. There's something during the course of the week that the Shea Townsend saw to know that he was not, he didn't have to worry about the go route down the side. He knew that in route was coming and he jumped it. Remember, Lovey Smith told us last night, he says, I know that I'm going to have Kyle Orton throw and I think we can pass successfully against this Steeler team. Hasn't happened yet. Third down and six on the 36. And Orton to the air again, and his pass caught by Musi Muhammad, and a first down into Steeler territory. That's the fifth catch of the game for Muhammad. Good for 15 yards with Townsend. On. Muhammad has stepped up today. He's making some good throws, but I agree, Dick. They've got to get some points going in at halftime. And throwing on first down, Kyle Orton being chased down, and he's going to be tackled after a gain of one by James Farrier. So. I have to tell you, and you pointed it out, that the Steelers doing a great job on coverage downfield, even when they are locked on a receiver, and perhaps playing better than the, maybe the Bears anticipated that secondary of playing. Well, when you go up against Pittsburgh, you're trying to find that area that you can exploit, and, and Chicago really felt it was down the field passing, which is not a great situation for their offense to be in, but you can see that they really believe it. They're trying to get Kyle to get that ball down the field. Second down and nine. Deep drop this time. And the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Trying to go to Thomas Jones and Joey Porter got the deflection. You're not going to get there. Get your hands up. And that's that's one of the, the most frustrating plays for, for an offensive group. You've got something on the outside. You're going to check it down to Thomas Jones. Kimo Van Allhausen comes in and just gets his hand up. You never give up on the play. Remember, Orton is 6-4, and it'll be third down and nine at the 48-yard line of the Steelers. Orton's pass deflected incomplete, and a flag comes down late. Moussin Muhammad was the intended receiver. Gets a little heavier. Steelers will start from their own 48-yard line. Difference of 12 yards because of the penalty. Hand off to Willie Parker. And Parker slices off the right side to get into Bears territory. Getting five yards. And you saw Deshae Townsend go down uh, with the stinger. They call it a concussion. Doubtful that he'll be back in the Steelers' secondary. Well, actually, to me, that's good news. It's just a concussion. And I mean, people, well, just a concussion. What kind of statement is that? But let me tell you what, the way that they were they were working on him on the sideline, they were very, uh, you know, strict in his movement of his head and his neck. And he had that, uh, to me, it looked like a pinched nerve. So, in my opinion, hopefully it is just a concussion. Second down and five on the 47-yard line of Chicago. Here's Parker again backing oh. up, but gets a second try. First down for Parker and out of bounds. At about the 40-yard line, Brian Erlacher missed him initially. And then the six-yard gain for Parker, having a big game, averaging nearly four and a half yards per clip, 59 yards picked up. Well, this is what Tony was talking about in the first half. They're not running through their tackles. You're coming up, you're getting stopped. I mean, Willie Parker makes Brian Erlacher stop right in his tracks, and then he's lunging at him. I mean, how many times have we seen a replay where Brian Erlacher just runs through a ball carrier or a receiver? I mean, Willie Parker just froze him in his tracks. Leading rusher for the Steelers coming in. One of Dan Rooney's sons. Named Dan Rooney. I discovered him and the sign is an undrafted free agent. And here is Jerome Bettis who has come into the game. And Bettis uh, testing the middle, picking up two yards with Alex Brown, who is back in. You saw him shaken up a bit in the first half. Charles Tillman also involved. Right now, the Bears are getting out bared by the Pittsburgh Steelers in this style of football. They've, they've really controlled field position. They've established the run. They've, they've had some timely passes down the field. Their defense is playing good. They've shut down the Bears' running game. So the recipe for success that Chicago has used the last eight weeks, they're, they're getting a taste of it themselves right now from Pittsburgh. Dennis remains in the backfield. Parker over 100 yards total receiving and rushing. And here is Bettis. And Jerome Bettis tough to bring down. And close to a first down is Jerome Bettis. They can actually run that defense themselves. It's nice to see something different, though, Darrell. It's good. It's good. First down and 15 after the penalty. Hand off to Parker. And Parker will lose a couple of yards on the play. Hunter Hillenmeyer involved in right now for a game break. Let's go out to L.A. and James Brown. Hey, Dick, Rams mathematically still in the playoff hunt. Ryan Fitzpatrick, play action, the rookie from Harvard. 
takes it 14 yards to pay dirt to knot it up against Minnesota at 13. Six plays, 49 yards, all even back to Dick Stockton. Right that a Harvard guy does a Harvard score. Must, be, Brown. must be some of that new math if the, the Rams are still mathematically eligible. In the <laughs> NFC North, Bears with a two-game lead over the Vikings coming in. Second down and 16, Parker. And Parker driving inside the 35-yard line, picking up three yards on the play. Told you the Steelers at 7-5. and five. Two teams ahead of them at 8-4 and four are the Chargers and the Chiefs. Both of those teams play late. And uh, there you see the numbers of the leaders for the Steelers so far in this game. Pittsburgh, three of their last four games, including this one against this NFC way. North opponents. But they have hope. Third down and 14. The ball is on the Chicago 34. And the Steelers with the typical third down formation out of the shotgun. Roethlisberger with loads of time. Caught by Antoine Randall L. First down inside the 20. A big 15-yard play for the Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger has all day in the pocket. Number 82, Antoine Randall releases up the field, just sits it down in a little soft spot right there. And we talk about these zone coverages when the guys are dropping back. Instead of blitzing, you're going to drop back and play zones, and there's little windows. That's exactly what we're talking about. You've got to find that little spot in the zone where you've got a clear throwing lane back to the quarterback. Great execution, quarterback, wide receiver. And a far cry for the Bears today. Red zone defensively, first and 10 on the 19. They give it to Parker again. And Parker hit immediately by Lance Briggs, but uh, getting about two yards on the play. Ball control, a big factor right now. The Steelers have had it for about three and a half to four minutes more than the Bears. And of course, when you have a lead, that's what you want to do. The big thing is, is the fact that you know, coming into it, you know, this this is the formula for Chicago. And, and you know, they watched how Pittsburgh did it last year. And, uh, you know, they're just doing everything that we normally see the Bears do to their opponents. Second down and nine. You never know the way he's played that Ben Roethlisberger has a, an injured thumb. And there's the shuffle pass to Willie Parker. And Parker slips. So a play that uh, we've seen Brett Favre use uh, throughout his career. The shovel pass to Parker. No gain on the play. See, Roethlisberger has been protected very well today. That goes back to those two tackles. Trey Essex and Max Starks doing a great job in the ends. And Brian Urlacher here right now. He's got a lot to sort out on this play. Dan Kreider's coming up to try and get a hit on him. But th the speed that he has from the inside out as a linebacker, Willie Parker, very speedy back, you know, getting on those edges. And, and Brian Urlacher inside out from that middle linebacker position beats him to the corner. Third down back. Veron Haynes in there. It'll be third down and nine. From the 18, and here's Roethlisberger's pass. And trying to hold on, and the catch is made by Quincy Morgan. Jerry Azuma all over him, but Quincy Morgan making the grab. A 10-yard play inside the 10, close to the first down. Here comes your pressure by the Bears. They're coming to this side. Look at number 34, Veron Haynes. You talked about him, Dick, is the third down back being in the lineup. Look at him cross the formation right there to pick up the blitzer. Great presence by Veron Haynes. That's why he's in there on third down. And Morgan signed just before the season started. He was with the Cowboys last year and with the Browns four years before that. First and goal for Pittsburgh on the eighth. Here's Jerome Bettis straight ahead, getting to the five. Todd Johnson is there. Well, we got to start talking about the other guys on this offensive line for the Steelers. We've mentioned their tackles, but you get down inside now. The running game, they've been really between the tackles most of the day. And Alan Fanica and Jeff Harding, Kendall Simmons doing a good job. That's the strength of this offensive line right now. The concern was out there on the tackles. But as a group, they've played a tremendous game so far against the Bears. Harding to the Pro Bowl last year. Fanica went to the last four Pro Bowls. Second down and goal. They go to Bettis again. Bettis gets hit. Still driving. Touchdown! They thought 
Said it could be a Jerome Bettis kind of day, and it is. His second touchdown here, five yards. We've talked about missed tackles, but these are just broken tackles by Jerome Bettis. Bam, bam. Well, I tell you, some guys, you get down in the red zone, down by the goal line, and they just have a nose for the end zone, and that's Jerome Bettis. You saw the one earlier in the game. Not in the lineup, and he would have gone, and I don't think it would have been a touchdown if he was in the lineup right there, guys. Well, I'll tell you, Ben Roethlisberger told you on the field before the game, missing Brown would be huge for Chicago as Thomas Jones running and breaking a couple of tackles. First down, Thomas Jones, and knocking him out of bounds, Polamalu, after a huge game. Ryan McFadden had missed the block immediately at a gain of 38 yards for Thomas Jones. Well, there's the guy we've been waiting for in this offense to make a play. It's a trap to the right side of counter. Look at the vision by Thomas Jones. Gets inside and great balance on a very slick field today. Troy Palomalu comes over, gets him out of bounds. But we've been waiting all afternoon for somebody on this offense to step up and make a play to give these guys some confidence. Longest play from scrimmage for the Bears. First down on the Steeler, 36. And here's Kyle Orton. And Orton trying to shovel it away. Pressure from Aaron Smith. Adrian Peterson was close to it. So uh, no intentional grounding called on that play. And in case you're wondering, Kyle Orton playing his college football in the Big Ten at Purdue, used to this kind of weather. Thomas Jones, first 11 carries, got him 32, and he smashed that with that last play. Yeah, Kyle Orton has got to get used to the feel in the pocket. That ball's either got to come out, thrown away somewhere. you got to throw it on time to a guy who's there, or if not, get rid of it. You can't be holding the ball that long in this situation. And Adrian Peterson, who performed well as a backup last week in there now, gets the pitch. Here's Adrian Peterson. And Peterson to the 33-yard line, stopped by Ike Taylor for a game. And you watch him on film, and the things that they do, I, it, it's not even the same group out there on the field this afternoon. And, of course, during the 16-game schedule, you're going to have games like this, particularly on the road. Second down and 10. Jerome Bettis, who has scored two touchdowns, is in the tailback. Bettis getting the call, has an opening. Jerome Bettis regains his footing and will go out of bounds at the 36-yard line. 39 yards for Bettis, having a brilliant game today at the hands of the Chicago Bears. And they just went straight up the gut on this one. Chicago's in a good look. I mean, look at the guys. One, two, three, four, five guys right there at the point of attack. And here comes Jerome Bettis right up the middle, right through all those defenders. You know, with weather like this, guys, the advantage has to go to the team who has the running game already established, like Jerome Bettis. He's a downhill runner. He doesn't cut much, so he's not going to slip. The footing really doesn't matter. They can eat up the clock, the Steelers. The advantage goes to them with this kind of weather today. Ron Haynes. And, of course, uh, having the big lead allows the Steelers to run the ball and use up the clock and play the way you're talking about, Tony. But both of these teams are built to play in this kind of weather. I think it's great having all the snow and the wind and the cold. Not great for the Bears. It's great for you up there, Dick, but it's not great down here, man. I'm freezing. <laughs> Look, you've been there before as a player, so you know. Second down and seven. Steelers on the Bears 33-yard line. Roethlisberger has hit 12 of 18 for 160 yards and a touchdown. Hands off to Haynes. In the air, the ball is jarred loose. I'm going to bet Pittsburgh comes up here. You're going with the, the odds of who has had the big advantage. <laughs> you got it again. You got it again. Uh, just one of those days. I'm, I'm glad I didn't challenge you on that one. Oh. <laughs> hey, when it when it's bouncing that way, it's just going to continue to bounce that way. It's just you mentioned it, Dick. You know, you're going to have a game like this at some point, and you've got a team that's got their back to the wall with Pittsburgh. You're in their stadium. Uh, you know, this, things just aren't going your way today. They haven't from the opening of the game either. Third down and three. Down and three. Ball on the 29-yard line. Maybe. I can't tell. <laughs> Hand off. Haynes. And he is uh, stopped after a pickup. 
of a, a couple of feet. There have been six fumbles, four by the Steelers, and everyone has recovered their own miscue. So a first down on the 29. Bears taking over on downs, and Kyle Orton's pass, and leaping wow. up is Desmond Clark, and the catch of the day by the Bears' tight end. Desmond Clark with a 29-yard game. Catch of the day. I'm going to go catch of the year. Look at this. Three guys right there extended out. Knows he's going to take a big hit. And then we haven't even factored in the weather conditions yet. What a great play by Desmond Clark. I'll go with you. <laughs> maybe not of the year, but maybe of the month. Can we do that? I'm still going to go with you. I don't think it could be the year. First down on the 44-yard line of the Steelers and here is Orton going deep again downfield and this pass is caught catched by Bernard Berrien at the one yard line two big pass plays so where was that Kyle Orton before that 43 yards <laughs> unbelievable just when you think the Bears are in a position where they can't come back I mean back to back huge plays down the field look at Bernard Berrien that is that is excellent concentration I cannot tell you how how good those last two catches were in these conditions and wrestling the ball away from Mike Taylor so two big pass plays and it's first and goal on the one yard line and the handoff to Thomas Jones and Jones scores for the Bears so all of a sudden the fourth quarter light went on and Kyle Orton hit two big pass plays and then Thomas Jones goes over from one and it's now all of a sudden 21 to 9. That that was amazing. I mean, we're looking at a group, the big determining factor. First down and five after the penalty. Dennis, the big running back, remains in the game, gets the first down. Very tough to bring down under any circumstances. Gets eight yards before Erlacher corrals it. I look at all the guys for the Chicago Bears, and, and they're still running the ball effectively in these uh, in, at this time. I mean, they're it's a it's a great job by this Steelers offensive group and you talked about the fact that they're not really afraid to run into the eight man fronts they've got some some good uh, some good philosophies when they do that whether it's bringing Heinz Ward into block or or turning guys farthest away from the point of attack loose but if Chicago brings all these guys down they're not worried they still feel they can run it effectively first down on the 33 of the Steelers and again they give it to better time hit immediately by Brandon McGowan who came in from the safety spot Undrafted rookie out of Maine, close to no gain on the play. And uh, the Steelers, with the lead and running the ball, are extending their time of possession edge about eight minutes at this point. So coming out of the game is Bettis. That's more, uh, more reasons why I, I still don't think he's going to be going up those stairs this week. Then he won't have to come down. He doesn't have stairs. to come down. That's how that works. If he goes up, he might not be able to make it back down. Ron Haynes in the back, second down and 11, and the screen pass to Haynes. Screen pass very effective on the first possession of the game for the Steelers. They get a first down here with 13 yards under Hillenmeyer downfield. Jeff Harding is your center. He's going to come out. Obviously, he's right in front of Ben Roethlisberger. You heard the guys at halftime talk about the screen and Alan Fanica is out there these guys out in space are able to get on guys and you've got to have that certain style of offensive lineman the guys who are athletic enough I, it, it's very difficult for these big guys to get out on the perimeter and block a linebacker or block a safety effectively to allow that screen pass to get downfield Jeff Harding Alan Fanica those guys can do those types of things first down on the 45 yard line of Pittsburgh using up that clock here is Willie Parker Guys, just down here on the sideline, Jerome Bettis came off to the sideline. He's pointing to his left knee, as you can see. Um, you know, we pointed out that, you know, Monday he was limping around the house a little bit. It looks like he re-injured that. I don't know if he slipped on the field or got hit, but uh, I don't know if he's going to be back. They're working on him right now. All right, Tony, uh, Bettis already has done a great day's work. Steelers will need him, though, for the future games. They are at Minnesota next week, Cleveland the week after, and close against the Lions. Second down and 10 for the Steelers. On the 45, no gain on the last play. And again, it's Parker trying to go outside. And the Bears are there, close to midfield. Lance Briggs to stop. 
a pickup of four and nearly five minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. Jerome Bettis, Willie Parker, both of these guys today have uh, have been instrumental in getting this running game back on track. One of the big reasons in this three game slide that they haven't been effective and, and you see what they've done the last 35 games when they're over 100 yards they're undefeated when they're under 100 yards they haven't won and it's, it's kind of it was established very early against a very good defensive front of the Chicago Bears. 153 that's pretty solid against anyone including Chicago third down and six and Roethlisberger up the middle tipped away intended for Quincy Morgan and covering on the play downfield was Todd Johnson. Score of 21 to 9, which the Steelers are. They can do all the dancing they want right now. Meanwhile, first down, and the pitch going to Thomas Jones. Jones backed up, nowhere to go. And down he goes after picking up about two yards. Well, Ben Roethlisberger got it started. Notice the weather changing. Hines Ford, with second effort from 14 yards out, made it 7-0. Robbie Gold put the Bears on the scoreboard with a field goal. Then Jerome Bettis with his first of two touchdowns in the second quarter. In the third, this five-yard run made it 21-3. to And now look at the snow. Thomas Jones with a one-yard run after Kyle Orton hit two big pass plays. And let's see, uh, Darrell, if he follows suit here, second and seven. On the 18-yard line. Orton looked like a different quarterback the last time. And this one sails over the head of Musi Muhammad as we check in with James Brown in L.A. Hey, Dick, Cadillac Williams of the Buccaneers trying his best to make certain that they snap that five-game losing streak to Carolina. 10-yard run to pay dirt his first multi-touchdown game as a Buccaneer and as a professional. Fifth 100-yard rushing game. That is a team rookie record. 5.33 left in regulation. Back to Dick Stockton. All right, JB. So different weather conditions. A little chilly in Charlotte. Snowy here. Third down and seven for the Bears with 8.24 remaining in the fourth quarter. Here's Kyle Orton in trouble. Down he goes. Back. Loss of the year, 24 to 7. Lost the next week at Cleveland, then reeled off eight in a row. But trailing here, first down on the 49 of Pittsburgh. Jerome Bettis. He are all right to stay in the game and barrel his way to the 46, picking up five. Lance Briggs. This running game of the Steelers has been so impressive because they're just coming out. They're telling Chicago what they're going to do. I mean, by formation and by personnel. I mean, at this point in the game, you're not trying to trick somebody with the way you're lining up. Pittsburgh's just coming out and say, guess what, guys? We're going to run the ball. Let's see if you haven't stopped us yet this afternoon. We'll see if you can find some point in the fourth quarter where you think you can slow this ground game down. 158 yards rushing. Came in 10th in the league at 124. When you've got nine defensive players for the Bears within five yards of the line of scrimmage in depth and one yard outside each each widest, widest guy on the Steelers' offensive line. And this will get another first down, driving the Bears back. You said it early, missing tackles. They didn't miss the tackle here, but that has been a malady for this team. And a first down. Taking a look at the AFC playoff picture, Steelers at 7-5 and five would need help. Kansas City at 8-4 and the Chargers at 8-4 right now are ahead of them. Both of those teams play later and the Steelers would have to win and get help from other teams against San Diego and Kansas City. Well, they've gotten themselves back on track today against the Chicago Bears and, and a lot of the problems that Bill Cowher saw in that three-game losing streak, they have corrected this afternoon. First down on the 39 of Chicago. And again, it's the bus. Healthy gain of six. Let's look at the Steelers, as we said. They're going to be playing mostly NFC North foes. Well, the Vikings won't be an easy deal as the Vikings threatening to extend their winning streak to seven games today. Cleveland on the road the week after, and they close with Detroit. That Cleveland game being a divisional game, you know, that takes on a lot of meaning. It's just down the road here, so you can throw that 4-8 and eight record out the window. Minnesota wins today. It would be their sixth. Jerome Bettis back out, guys. Looks like he got banged up a little bit. I don't even know why he's still in there. I think this game is... Uh... Second down and four, Willie Parker. Parker. 
That's a good point, but I guess Tony, I guess he feels well enough despite the, the way the knee is run for him to, to be in there a couple of times. Yeah, but you have to make a coaching decision, man. He, he's on the sideline yeah, right doesn't. now, bent over. He's he's not 100%. He's not, you know, he's banged up. Now you're all, all of a sudden, if you keep playing him, you're jeopardizing whether he's going to play over the next two or three weeks. So there's no reason for him to be in right now. The conditions, you know, obviously probably benefit Jerome Style more than Willie Parker, but Willie's just got to realize that, you know, it's snowy out, it's, the field is slick, and instead of trying to bounce everything, just, just watch what Jerome's doing. He was just getting in behind his offensive line and letting them push. Talk about balance. Steelers today, almost perfectly balanced. Willie Parker. Sometimes when you ha don't have that girth that Jerome Bettis has, it's a little tough to bust through that line. Been under some pressure this afternoon. First down from the 20-yard line. And Orton completes the pass to Musin Muhammad out of bounds, picking up eight yards. Well, a lot of people talk about this position and what Kyle Orton has done. There was a big play earlier, you know, the, the naked bootleg down by the goal line. He takes a big hit from Deshea Townsend. Joey Porter's gotten him. I mean, it's been a difficult day with the conditions, with everything going on. And yet he's played probably as well as he has the past few weeks. He finally got some rhythm going with Musin Muhammad. He got some balls down the field to give his guys an opportunity to make a play on. Second down and two. And a quick toss. And it's caught and it'll be a first down. Thomas Jones, the running back, picking up enough for the first down. So Orton has completed 12 of 27 for 170 yards and the hurry up offense as we get close to three minutes remaining. And Horton's pass and caught by Muhammad out of bounds again. Of course, again, the story with the quarterbacks, this team wins eight in a row. Kyle Orton wins, but last week, you know, 68 yards and a, a terrible game for him. Rex Grossman, who has been injured now in the number two slot. Remember he had the broken ankle, but He's not ready to play yet, really, and, and especially to be a number one guy to lead a team going to the playoffs, I would think. No, he's not. And the promotion of Rex Grossman to the number two spot, really what that did is it added depth to the position at this point in the year, which, which is what Lovey Smith was hoping to accomplish with that. Now, with everything else that has gone on revolving the quarterback situation in Chicago, I think a lot of people saw it as the groundwork for Rex to come into the lineup. But if you look at that right there, there's not a whole lot of difference in their performance. And Rex has only played six games in his NFL career over three years. Kyle is 9-3 and three this year. Yeah, they had a bump in the road today. But I don't think the game was lost because of the way Kyle Orton played this afternoon. The defense did not play as well as they have in the past. And if your formula is going to be great defense, a good running game, and then adequate quarterback play, that didn't happen today because they did not have that great defensive performance. And those were the numbers coming into today for Kyle Orton. Third down and three. And Orton's pass. And it's caught by Musi Muhammad. Well, after getting shut out last week, Muhammad with his eighth catch of the game. Good for 21 yards with Hope covering and a first down in Steeler territory. And this is a nice throw by Kyle Orton because it's covered two on the outside. And you've got a small window there between the corner and the safety. You've got to get it over the corner and get it there before the safety can come in and make a play. He's made a couple of nice throws today. So cover two, that's basically what the Bears usually play. Well, it's, it's becoming more and more popular around the NFL. The Bears, the, the Colts, they play a, a certain style. But yeah, Pittsburgh's they're, they're in it again right now. And the reason you played in this situation, it, it really takes away that big play down the field. Two safeties back deep. That's why they call it cover two. Pass thrown underneath to Thomas Jones and a good tackle by James Farrier, limiting Jones to a mere two yards with under three minutes on the clock. And the hurry up goes on. Second down and eight for the Bears. Here's Orton's pass and caught by Bobby Wade, his first catch. A couple of yards short of the first down with Bryant McFadden making the tackle for Pittsburgh. Well, the play that was, was really a, a backbreaker was the uh, you know, the missed extra point uh, on that last touchdown. It really uh, has really made it very difficult for these Bears to get in position this late in the game to, to really have a realistic chance to win. Pass overthrown, Muhammad on the sideline. Hussein with eight catches, 91 yards. And the clock stops with 218 on the clock. Fourth down. Coming up, and the Bears, of course, need the yardage. Lovey Smith's team has all three of their timeouts remaining. Justin Gage, who's got the size, has come in at wide receiver. 
on fourth down and three. So the Bears extending this game somewhat depends on this play. Showing blitz. And the pass thrown behind Gage, who came in incomplete. And the Steelers will take over on downs. Second down and six. You can also uh, thank Kevin Santos on the special camp, too, there, Dick. You did. And we thank him. Ball at midfield, and there is Jerome Bettis. Goes over 100 yards for the 61st time in his career. And right now, let's take a look at the Ooh. NFC playoff picture as the clock runs with under a minute and a half to go. Bears, we're going to give them a loss right now and give Tampa Bay a win. So right now, the Bears and Tampa Bay both 9-4. and four. The Bears would have the edge on the tiebreaker because they beat them. So they would still be number two. But the Minnesota Vikings lurk. If they win, go on and win, they will have six straight wins and an 8-5 and five record and trail the Bears by only one. So it gets very interesting. So Bettis with 102 yards. Third down and two. They go back to Bettis. Not uh oh. Back. Can we go back under 100? Uh, we also want to thank. Bears managed one touchdown today. And Kyle Orton had one flash with two passes for 70 yards, setting up the touchdown. But Bill Cowher's Steelers come back against the Bears and end the Chicago eight game winning streak in the process. And that's the story here in Pittsburgh on a snowy day, victorious day for Pittsburgh. Steelers win it 21 to 9.